This is a Friday Shoes production. This is lesson 8-4 in our books on page 434, and our target is I can solve equations with variables on both sides. We've been dealing and solving equations with one variable. Now we're going to talk about uh, on, on one side, and now we're going to talk about equations that have variables on both sides. We'll take a look. Some equations like 8 plus 4D equals 5D have variables on each side of the equal sign. Notice we have 4D on the left and then we have 5D on the right of the equal sign. To solve these equations, we use the addition or subtraction property of equality to write an equivalent equation with the variables on one side of the equal sign. Then we solve the equation. So first things first, let's take a look at the one they gave us. What we need to do is isolate the variable on one side. So we need to move either the 4D to the right or 5D to the left. And the simple way to do this is find the one that has the most and then move the other to that side. For instance, 5D is more than 4D. So I'm going to move the 4D to the 5D side. And the way we do that is, well, first we rewrite the problem. And then we would, and this is the horizontal method of solving. They actually subtract 4D from both sides. And notice when on the left side, when you take away 4D, you're left with 8. And on the right side, when you take 5D minus 4D, that's 1D. And 1D is just D. So we're left with D equals 8. Hey, it solved itself right there. So we have D equals 8. How about an equation like 6N minus 1 equals 4N minus 5? You notice we have 6N on the left. We have 4n on the right. We also have some other things here. But step one is rewrite the problem. Then we notice that 6n is larger than 4n. So we're going to move the 4n over to the left or subtract 4n from the right side and also the left side. And when you do that, you're left with 2n on the left. And notice the n on the right side is now gone. There's no 4n anymore. anymore. We just brought down the negative 1 and the negative, or the minus 1 and the minus 5 there. And now we would want to get the number parts, that minus 1, to go to the other side. So we add 1. We do the inverse operation. We have negative 5 plus 1. We do the math there. That's how we cancel out that negative 1. We have plus 1. Now we have 2n left. And on the right side, we have negative 4. Next step would be to divide away that 2, and 2 divided by 2 is 1n, so we have n left. And then on the right, of course, negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. So there's the all the steps involved to solve that equation. Why don't you give it a shot on a couple here? Why don't you pause the video, solve, and come on back and see how you did. All right, the first one, solving. Well, let's write the equation down. We have variables on both sides, so we have to isolate them on one side. So when we do that, step one, well, we should probably draw our train tracks. And we, Step one is going to be to subtract 5a from both sides, since that's the smaller one. Get it over to the left side. And now we have 3a equals 21. And then we divide by 3, and a equals 7. How about b? We have 3x minus 7 equals 8x plus 23. Well, let's rewrite our problem. Make sure we have some train tracks here. And now, what's our step? Let's move, let's eliminate the smaller one, which is minusing 3x, and then 8x minus 3x. We subtract 3x on both sides. And then we're left with negative 7 equals 5x plus 23. Our next step would be to get rid of that 23 by subtracting it, since it's plus 23, minus 23. So we're left with negative 30. Now, how did we get that? We took negative 7 minus 23, and that's negative 30. And we have 5x left over here. Now we divide by the variable's coefficient, which is 5, on both sides. And we end up with negative 6. Negative 30 divided by 5 is negative 6. All right, how about this last one, C here? First, rewrite the problem. And you'll notice I'd like to use the addition of 
uh, or add op property where I have addition instead of subtraction. That's why there's a negative 12 there. And let's see here we have 7g and 7 thirds g. And 7 thirds g is actually smaller than 7g, so I'm going to subtract the 7 thirds g from both sides. And when we do that, I'm going to change my 7 into 21 thirds, have the bottoms uh, be have a common denominator of 3. So then 21 minus 7 is 14 g, or 14 thirds g, plus negative 12 equals 3. That's the, what's left on the right side. Then we're going to add 12 to both sides. I almost forgot my train tracks there. Try to keep everything organized. So we add 12 to both sides. That eliminates the 12 on the left, or the negative 12, I should say. And then we have 15 here on the right. Now we can divide by 14 thirds, or we can multiply by the reciprocal. Of course, our book loves when you multiply by the reciprocal. So when you do that, we end up having g by itself. And 15 times 3 fourteenths is 3 and 3 fourteenths. All right, our last one here. This is a real world example. And they're giving you a story here about cell phones. And then you're going to actually write the equation. And it will have variables on both sides. It says a cell cellular phone provider charges $24.95 per month plus $0.10 cents per minute for calls. Another cellular provider charges $19.95 per month plus $0.20 cents per minute for calls. Yes, kids, they used to charge you per minute for calls. Now it seems like everyone's got unlimited. Uh, for how many minutes of calls in this situation is the monthly cost of both providers the same? So what we have are two providers, and we're going to have one on the left, one on the right, and we're going to have them equal to each other so that we can figure out when they will be equal. When will the one provider be equal to the other provider at these different rates. So step one is finding out each each provider's detail. So we have $24.95 per month plus 10 cents per minute. And when is that going to be equal to $19.95 per month plus 20 cents per minute? Well, we're going to let M represent the minutes. And they put those words into an equation or into expressions and then set them equal to make them an equation. So that's why you have the $24.95 plus $0.10 cents times minutes, how many minutes you have, and then $19.95 plus $0.20 cents times minutes. And then, of course, we work our way through and solve that equation. They gave you all the little steps here to go down. We ended up at having 50 as our answer. I just noticed something that's goofy here. Our computer sometimes does this. There's actually division here. Uh, and you can see where it actually will be equal. One provider and the other provider will be the same cost if you use the phone for exactly 50 minutes. Let's try one here. Now, these are a little bit challenging, so I know it's, you might have a little struggle with it. Give it a shot real quick, and then uh, come on back and see how I actually pull this one together. All right, we're talking about flags here, and it says Congress established the first official United States flag on June 14, 1777. Pretty cool. Now, the length of a flag is 0.3 foot less than twice its width. If the perimeter is 14.4 feet longer than the width, find the dimensions of the flag. Well, let's talk about that first sentence. It says that the length of a flag is 0.3 or three-tenths of a foot, less than twice its width. So I let W equal its width, and then I let the length be 0.3 less than two times the width, or twice the width. So you can see, those are the two expressions I have. I got W, and then I have 2W minus 0.3. Now, what else do we know? Well, they said the perimeter... 14.4 feet longer than the width. So the perimeter is 14.4 feet longer than the width. So notice I've taken 14.4 plus W, and that's got to be the perimeter. And then I also know that the perimeter is the width, two widths and two lengths. So I've put in two widths and two lengths together there. That equals perimeter as well. So if these two things both equal the perimeter, the red and the 
blue and the perimeter is one particular number, can't we set them equal to each other? Yes, we can. So 14.4 plus W has got to be equal to W plus W plus the two widths, or the two lengths there, 2W minus 0.3 and 2W minus 0.3. So what do we do now? Well, we've got to simplify this expression here. So when we do that, you can kind of see I have 6W minus 0 0.6. That's the 2.3s put together. All the Ws get together and get uh, add up to 6W. Now what do we do? What we've done before. So next step would be subtracting this W right here. That's a plus 1W. We usually would put a 1 there. Now we'll have minus 1W. From both sides and we'll end up with 14.4 equals 5w minus 0.6. Next step, let's get rid of that 0 0.6 and let's add 0 0.6. And when we add that to both sides we end up with, well there, that's nice. On the left we end up with 15. On the right we have 5w. Last step, we're going to divide by 5. When we divide both sides by 5, you end up with W equaling 3. And there's your answer. The width is 3. Now, what would be the length? If the width is 3, what would be the length? So, width is 3. Well, take that 3 and let's plug it into the, the length formula, which is 2 times 3 minus 0 0.3. So, that's 6 minus 0 0.3. And that is going to be 5.7, and I think we're measuring here in feet, so there we are. So the width is 3 feet, and the length will be 5.7 feet. Don't forget, you can always rewatch this video if you need to review, or you can look at the examples in the book, or you can check out our personal tutor videos that are on the online textbook. And this has been a Friday Shoes production.